The Loop Deck Plus was originally designed for Lightroom Classic, so the jump to Photoshop is not much of a stretch. The default mappings for Photoshop are much better than the video editing presets that Loop Deck created for Premiere and After Effects, presumably because the designers appear to have more experience with image editing. I only made a few changes to my presets when I created my labeling overlay for Photoshop, and those were to increase the consistency between Photoshop and the other applications that I use it with. With the newest version of the Photoshop plugin, you have to turn on the plugin every time you open Photoshop. Hopefully Adobe will fix that soon. My main changes were to map C1 to Save and Save As, and C2 to Enable slash Disable Layer and Duplicate Layer when FN is held down. These replace Select Previous Tool, which switched to the left arrow, and Swap Foreground and Background Colors, which was moved to pressing the Exposure Dial in Custom Mode, which is a logical place for it. Instead of holding FN, you can press that to swap to the foreground color, rotate to adjust the color, and press again to swap it to the background. So there are multiple ways of accomplishing certain tasks, depending on how you like to work. I also moved the tools around the L1 to L3 buttons to be more consistent with the other applications. The rest of the buttons are mostly at their default mappings and fairly self-explanatory once you have the labeling overlay. The large dial controls the brush size and hardness, while D1 zooms and D2 controls the layer opacity. The color dials each apply a different adjustment layer to the image when pressed, and then affects those adjustment layer settings when rotated. The type of adjustment layer that is added is labeled in brackets on the overlay, which is how I denote the result of pressing a control. The first three rollers in hue mode, as well as the left three dials in custom mode, adjust the hue, saturation, and luminance values of the foreground color, and when holding FN, they adjust the background color. In saturation mode, the rollers affect the variables in adjustment layers. In luma mode, the first five rollers adjust the brush settings, similar to what the four center dials do in custom mode. You can adjust the brush size, mode, opacity, flow, and smoothing right at the touch of a roller or dial. The color BW button applies a black and white adjustment layer when pressed. The right four dials control various other options in custom mode, the most significant of which being the temperature dial, which navigates the layer stack and can jump between editing layers and their masks when you press it. The P1 through 8 buttons select different tools to be used with the mouse, while with FN held, P8 converts the selected layer to a smart layer, and the first seven buttons apply various smart layer filters. The before after button solos the selected layer, while the screen mode button cycles between various full screen modes to hide the taskbar and panels. The export button opens the export as dialog box, and with FN held, I have mapped it to open my preferred save for web dialog box. The arrow buttons navigate and edit the layer stack, masks, and layer settings. The rest of the mappings are well labeled and should be easy to figure out. Give it some time, but you should be able to work faster the more you use them. And don't hesitate to further customize the mappings if needed, regardless of the overlay labels. For more detailed info, check out techwithmikefirst.com.